Hi everyone, Morthany Lestano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Gilliband record, Most Normal. This is a brand new LP from Dublin Noise and post-punk outfit Gilliband, formerly Girl Band. This thing is out now via Rough Trade Records. I've been aware of the group since their debut, but I've been following them for longer than I've been intensely covering them. Mostly because I can be kind of picky when it comes to noise rock, admittedly, and for a band associated with one of the harshest music genres on the planet, I never really found their stuff to be all that harsh. Or uniquely noisy, abrasive. Not in a way that grabbed my attention for very long, anyway. However, uh, from what I can hear, they are really pulling out all the stops on their latest effort, which is easily their noisiest and most deafening record to date. Also one of the most crushing and blown out listening experiences I've had in 2022. Really, the insane amount of dissonance, distortion, bass, and volume the band conjures on this LP through their production is impressive. And and often they deploy this with tight driving drum work and snotty spoken word rants that aren't too unlike that of a band like The Fall, for example. But don't mistakenly take this project as an exercise in nostalgia because the electronics, the sonic heft of this record feels very modern. Take the song Eight Fivers, for example, which features a crisp, repetitive, tension-building beat topped with some over-enunciated spoken word vocals about uh, buying shit clothes, buying cheap clothes, which may strike some as an odd sentiment to kick this record off with, but this is not the only moment on the album that focuses on fashion, and there's at least a few general themes here dealing in materialism, consumerism. I do have my issues on this track with the structuring and the cop-out ending, but I do have to give it to the band for building things up from the start and a minute in, letting loose with the thickest hits of distortion and bass rumble and stuttering feedback that you're going to hear in 2022. It's like all of a sudden a nuclear meltdown is happening next door to the music studio. The track Backwash has a similar sonic makeup, with bare grooves and vocal passages occasionally being smothered with insane tinnitus-inducing hits of distortion and pummeling rhythms. It's a complete shock to the system, one whose edge has dulled with repeat listens to this record, but uh, uh, still, in that first moment, it does hit. The song Bin Liner Fashion switches things up structurally, doesn't so much alternate between the quiet bits and the loud and harsh bits, really more on this continual incline of abrasiveness that finishes in an animalistic display of just fried and burnt out drums, noise, bass, vocals, and this revving, pitchy tone that's laced into the mayhem. The Weirds has a more linear progression as well, a few different phases to the first of which is this a uh, very bright cycling almost meditative drone then the track becomes this really intense fever dream of speedy oompa drums some shrill guitars the vocals get a bit more aggressive too turning into a uh, less spoken word more of a manic rant my one major issue with this track is that with all this tension it essentially does nothing and just kind of dips out at the very end quickly transitioning into this semi ambient uh, piece of rock with a really ear-piercing synth bit in the mix there that uh, sounds like <laughs> it's reaching so high it's trying to play something that only dogs can hear. But yeah, the track is anticlimactic in the worst way. But still, even with those issues, I would say the record is uh, really tense and eventful so far, on track to be the group's best, but then uh, the second half of this thing is kneecapped by uh, some of the shoddiest cuts on the entire LP. The awkward beat and rhythm combo on I Was Away uh, throws off much of this track. I feel like the band was kind of of attempting uh, some feel-good industrial funk, maybe, but it doesn't quite get there. The harsh wall of noise that pops in at one point on the track, uh, again, does hit hard and is uh, very abrasive, but at this point on the album, it's not really a novel idea or presentation, it's just kind of, you know, another one of these moments that we've heard a lot of. It's kind of like the equivalent to a jump scare in a horror movie, and the band is just throwing them out there willy-nilly at this point. The track almost soon has some similarly quirky vibes between the rich, bright, and easygoing guitar chords and a aggressive rhythmic loops, but once again I feel like I'm in a state where I'm just waiting for the moments where the track will get loud because those just end up being the most thrilling. Uh, everything else surrounding those moments is just sort of drab. Now Red Polo and Pratfall I find to be really odd moments to throw toward the very end of this album. They're not super long, and both kind of run like really obnoxious interludes that overstay their welcome, and they occur back to back in the track list for some reason, which again, 
odd because there are other interlude cuts on the LP that flow from and into the tracks they're surrounded by, but these two songs here, not particularly. Then we have the closer, Post Ryan, which goes back to a groove and sonic palette and intensity level that would have been a lot more fitting for the first leg of the record, and yet this is supposed to be serving as a final moment on this LP, and for sure the song's statements on depression and hitting rock bottom, that does bring a sense of finality to the project, but the sonics and the song structure of it all, not, not really. Once again, they fail to finish things off in an interesting way, and it's kind of like they've just left the money on the table and booked it for the door. While I do think this record has a couple of decent tracks on it, and it does create uh, numerous sensations of uh, sonic depravity, nearly all of those sensations are short-lived, as they're mostly guided by half-baked songs and structures, and a general lack of musical and textural variety. So while the production and the noise on this record, uh, yeah, those elements are impressive, uh, pretty much everything else about it is not. So as a result of that, I'm feeling a light five on this one. Transition, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Gilliband, forever.